rolling. This is the Fed Sock Films Podcast. Where we continue the conversation sparked, sparked on, on film. film. Quite on set. You want to know what freedom tastes like? It tastes like this beer. Take one. This is, in fact, the classic solution in search of a problem. Action. It cannot help but be controversial. Cut. With expert discussion and analysis. With the greatest legal minds on the topic today. The Fed Sock Films Podcast. It's a wrap. Welcome to the Fed Sock Films Podcast. I'm Matt Wood, director of Fed Sock Films. In February of 1789, George Washington was unanimously elected the first president of the United States with all 69 electoral votes. And along with many questions, big and small, around the office of the presidency was what to call the president. His Highness? His Excellency? This was the first time the people of a nation had elected a president. But what to call him remained up for debate. We interviewed three experts on George Washington for our film, American Cincinnatus, which explores the parallels between George Washington and the Roman statesman Cincinnatus, who, like Washington, was a successful general and politician who gave up power and returned to life as a citizen. While this film talks about many precedents that Washington set as first president, we had to cut to the story of what to call him in order to save time. But because we loved that story so much, we saved it from the cutting room floor and will present it here on the first cutting room floor edition of the Fed Sock Films podcast. This episode features Judge Andrew Oldham. My name is Andrew Oldham, um, and I am a judge on the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. My chamber is in Austin, Texas. Dr. Matthew Spaulding. I am Matthew Spaulding, and I'm affiliated with Hillsdale College. Uh, I am the dean of the Van Andel School of Government at the Washington, D.C. campus. I'm also the Kirby Professor of Constitutional Government, which means you have many, many titles to choose from. And Dr. Jeffrey Morrison. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Morrison. I'm a professor of American Studies at Christopher Newport University in Newport News, Virginia. And I'm also the academic director of the federal government's James Madison Foundation in Alexandria, Virginia. We hope you enjoy it. The Constitution obviously doesn't provide a title. Um, for the president, it, it does. It, it talks about the executive power. It talks about the president. Um, it has an independent provision that that prohibits titles of nobility. But this was an open question, like so many things um, were shortly before um, Washington's inauguration. So about a week um, before uh, his inauguration in April, um, the Senate appointed a committee uh, to study this question and to come up with proposals. And there's a debate about that, and it's debate in Congress. And uh, John Adams, prominent among them, but also uh, Richard Henry Lee, wanted to use a more exalted title appropriate for a European head of state. Um, Adams wanted to call him His Highness. Uh, during the war, Washington's often referred to His Excellency. There's kind of a humorous anecdote about John Adams, who was sometimes uh, tempted toward too much pomp and circumstance and was in fact ridiculed for it during his own one term as president. Uh, Adams evidently, I think I have the, the nomenclature right here, Adams suggested, why don't we call him His High Mightiness, the President of the United States and Protector of Their Liberties, a very wordy and, and highfalutin title. Those are kind of European terms we associate with monarchical government, but not appropriate for a Republican government. Ben Franklin said, this is absurd to, to use such terminology. I think there were a lot of people who thought that setting that sort of example, which of course was very common at the time, right? I mean, in, in the 1780s, um, the world was dominated by, by kings and queens and monarchies um, and nobility and, and aristocratic regimes across the, the world. And so it wasn't weird to, to perhaps describe um, uh, the president as His Excellency or His Highness or any of these things. But it wasn't fitting with both what Washington wanted and with the new American Republic and the experiment um, in a Republican form of government uh, that they were that the, that the founders were attempting to, to execute. And that's why when the House countered um, with simply President of the United States, which is obviously what Washington accepted. That suited Washington better. He was often called His Excellency. In fact, there's a very good book with that title, A Biography of Washington. And he didn't, uh, he didn't eschew that. He didn't say, don't call me that. But that's about as, as high as he would allow things to go. And he was very comfortable with President of the United States. Washington himself understood the uh, impropriety and preferred to be called 
uh, Mr. President. Uh, and part of that is, is this transition. It kind of, uh, in, in the story, it kind of shows the transition between understanding the role of the executive as a, um, uh, a more, more monarchical uh, figure to, a, to the, a republicanizing, if you will, the executive within the constitutional structure. Uh, and, and for Washington, the, the, the term, the use of the term president, um, it can only be understood within the constitutional context. Uh, he is a constitutional officer, which say he's beholden to and, and serves the Constitution, which in turn means he serves the people. Uh, so his, uh, his sense of honor is not to be called, you know, your excellency or your highness, but, but the honorable thing is actually called Mr. President because you're the president of a people under a constitutional government. This was our first cutting room floor edition of the FedSock Films podcast. Today's episode came from a scene that we cut from our film American Cincinnatus and featured Judge Andrew Oldham of the Fifth Circuit, Dr. Matthew Spaulding, the Vice President of Washington Operations at Hillsdale College, and Dr. Jeffrey Morrison, Professor of American Studies at Christopher Newport University. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you want to learn more about George Washington's role as first president, check out our film, American Cincinnatus, on YouTube or at FedSock.org. That's F-E-D-S-O-C dot org. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe for more episodes of the FedSock Films podcast, and please leave us a review and let us know what you think. As always, the Federal Society doesn't take any positions on the issues discussed. That's a wrap. This has been a FedSock audio production.